Hello fellow artificers. Before we begin today, I want you to think back. Those of you who have been playing modded Minecraft for a while, do you remember this thing? This is a quarry from Buildcraft. It was pretty iconic because it was this machine that you place down that just digs for you and can get lots of stuff for you. Now, a lot of modern Minecraft mods like Mechanism have fancy new things like the digital, like the digital miner, which will mine out resources from the ground without even needing to touch the stone. But if you're working with Just Create, we can make something that scratches that itch, like that old Buildcraft quarry. We're going to use stuff like the rope pulley and the drills to dig down to the bottom of the earth, as well as stuff like the elevator in order to move between certain levels. Now, first up, you're going to want to get started with a platform of some kind. Now, this can be made out of any building block. I'm just using andesite casing, but it can be anything like wooden planks, which are a lot cheaper. Now, when designing your platform, it's important to remember that the bigger the platform, the exponentially more drills you're going to need in order to make this work. Now, you could technically lower it down piece by piece, like r different radiuses to save on the amount of drills, but if you want to do it all at once, like the old school quarry, you're going to need to fill the entire area with drills. For example, if I want to fill this 3x3 area with drills, I'm going to need 9 drills. If I'm going to want to fill a 4x4 area with drills, I'm going to need 16. And 5x5 five five is going to be 25. You can see how the amount of drills gets really expensive really quickly the larger you make your platform. But once you have your platform, you want to take some mechanical drills and come to the bottom side and place them on the bottom facing downward. And you want to make sure they're all facing downward and cover every block of your quarry. The next thing you're going to want to do is take some super glue and make sure to glue all these things to the platform. If you don't glue some of them together, some of them won't move whenever you give it some rotational energy. The next thing you're going to want to add is storage of some kind. Whenever a moving contraption breaks a block using a drill or a plow, if there's some kind of storage on the moving contraption, it will automatically put it into that storage. So I'm going to put some barrels on top here. Now you don't actually have to have them extruding out. You could have them a part of the platform, but just for demonstration, mine are going to be on top. Just like the drills, you're going to want to glue these drills down onto the platform. So one last look, this is most of the functional bits about our little quarry here. But the main thing is going to be this rope pulley. So the rope pulley is a handy little block. If you look on the bottom, there's this little pad here. This will raise and lower depending on what direction of rotational energy you're giving it. You see, if I give it some rotation, it's going to lower down. And once it gets to the bottom, it's going to stop, but this can be configured using the top here. If I give it the other direction of rotation, it's going to move up, and its little pad will stick to whatever block it's, it touches. We're going to use this up here. If we put down our rope pulley and then pull a shaft out, we can now apply some rotational energy. Now, you could simply just connect this to whatever water wheel or steam engine you have, but what if you want a little more control? That's where two different blocks come in, the gear shift and the clutch. Now, both of these two blocks are activated using redstone levers, but they both do different things. The clutch, whenever it's not activated, it's not going to do anything to the rotational energy of the shaft going through it. But if you turn it on, it's going to stop the rotational energy going out the other direction. This way, it's like an on-off switch. If you want it to stop moving, then you turn it on. If you want it to continue moving, you turn it off. The gear shift will change the direction of rotation depending on whether the switch is on or off. If the lever is off, the rotation is unaffected. If it's on, it's going to spin in the opposite direction on the other side. For example, I'm going to turn the clutch on and then Add a creative motor. Now if you look, the clutch is preventing the shaft from spinning because I don't want the other side to spin yet. Now if I turn the clutch off, it's going to continue spinning. Now as you can see, the gear shift is off, meaning the outputting rotation is going in the same direction. And if I turn it on, it's going to switch the direction going out the other side. This is incredibly useful for this machine specifically, in case you want to pull it back up. So once you have your clutch, your gear shift, all of your parts glued together, 
except do not glue the device to the rope pulley. The rope pulley will connect itself to the device. You can turn the clutch, turn the gear shift, and it will start moving downward. As you can see, it's going to dig a hole just like our old Buildcraft quarries did. Now, if you're in survival mode, you do not want to ride this thing down as much fun as it might be, unless you have a friend on the surface for you. Because the only way to control this thing without setting up any kind of wireless redstone is through the levers on top of our gear shift and our clutch. So if you're down here, there's no way you're getting out unless you have a friend up top to flick the levers for you, or if you have something like an elytra or a water bucket. Speaking of water. But as you can see, this device will continue to dig even if there is water in the way, which is incredibly useful because, you know, caves tend to be filled with water and or lava. Once your little quarry mineshaft thing has reached the bottom of the world, it's time to bring it back up. And, you'll, and from the surface, you'll know that it's reached the bottom when the rope stops moving. As you can see, the rope is textured, meaning whenever it moves, you should be able to see it move downward. Once it stops moving all the way, you can be sure and then flick the gear shift. Remember, the gear shift is the one that switches the direction. If you flick the gear shift, it will start making its way back up. Once your quarry has returned to the surface, you can then check the barrels to see what it's got. It's gonna be a lot of stone and probably also a lot of deep slate. But if you're lucky, you probably hit some diamonds or some other metals along the way. Now, what to do next? You could either tear it down and build it somewhere else to do another quarry and make another hole in your world, or you could convert it to an elevator. With the Minecraft Deeper Worlds, caving has become so much more lucrative than full-on strip mining, so it might be worth turning it into a mining elevator to get it all the way down. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I could just remove the drills, and use our friends the gear shift and the clutch to move the rope pulley up and down. And while this technically works, and I did use this on a previous video I did, I have since learned about the elevator pulley. Now, this device does require brass, so you're going to have to be at that stage in Create in order to make this. But this elevator pulley is so much more meant for transporting players up and down than the rope pulley. So what you can do is just replace the rope pulley with the elevator pulley. But then you're going to need two other things. You're going to need some contraption controls and a bunch of redstone controls. These contraption controls can just be placed on your elevator, but they also have to be glued down like anything else. These redstone contacts need to be at the edges of your elevator for a very specific reason. They connect together, as well as wherever you put them designates another floor on your elevator. So I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to put one here. And obviously, if the one on the elevator must be glued down. Once you've got your elevator pulley in place, at least two redstone contacts, and your contraption controls, you can then right-click your elevator pulley. This will fully convert your previous quarry into an elevator. And you'll know it works because the redstone contact that's not on the elevator will begin to look like a lamp almost. And once it's been right-clicked and turned into an elevator, your contraption controls will show a number on it. You can then use your scroll wheel to choose between different numbers and then right click to choose a floor to go to. So this elevator pulley is currently floor zero. Now with no other floors to go to, I can't change this number and go to any other floor. But let's say I find this cave here. This is really cool and I want to be able to come down here more often. So I'm gonna take another redstone contact and put it here. And you have to make sure that the redstone contacts will be in contact with the one on the elevator itself when the elevator moves down here. To know whether that you put it in the right spot, you can know when you place down the redstone contact. If it doesn't do anything to its texture, that means it's not in the right spot. If it texture updates to this lamp looking texture, then it is in the right spot. Now, once you've got more than one floor through redstone contacts made, you can come over to here to your contraption controls. Using your scroll wheel, you can now select which floor you want to go to. I'm currently at floor zero, and there's floor minus one. If I right click, it's going to take me all the way down to that floor.
Ta-da! And as you can see, the height is dependent on where the redstone contacts are. The rule of thumb is the redstone contact blocks will move to connect to one another. And you want to have the redstone contacts essentially on the same X and Z coordinates as one another, although they can vary by Y coordinates, because that's what an elevator does is move up and down. But let's say you don't like the idea of this being negative one, and you want your bottom floor at bedrock to be zero. You can right click this and change both its floor identifier, so I could change this to zero, and also give it a description, so underground. What this will do is then update the contraption controls over here, as you can see, it's telling me that floor zero is underground. And I can then scroll to the other zero. Now that's a little confusing, so you're probably going to want to give the other zero a better name. So I will give this one floor one and call it surface. And now we have surface and underground. And once you have your elevator pulley, since the elevator pulley determines on its own whether it needs to go up or down, you can actually get rid of your clutch and gear shift and just have your shaft go directly into the elevator pulley. Now, the elevator and elevator pulleys are fascinating contraptions that could honestly use a mini video of its own. That being said, now that you know how to access all of your world's resources at your fingertips, the question is, what are you going to do with these resources? Are you going to use them to make your world and everyone in it have a better life in a better place? Or are you going to use all these resources for yourself? That's for you to decide. Now, if you need any help with the stuff presented today, please check the comments below. You can ask a comment or see if anyone else has already asked your question. I'll do my best to answer. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you later.